Good evening, my name is Peter Thomas. Uh, for the last 17 years, I've been traveling around uh, doing uh, dramatic recitations of narrative verse. Um, I like to tell stories. I am not a romantic style poet that dives inward and stays there. I want to do things. This first poem is a true story. It's called The Bistro Blues. It's in my uh, first collection of work entitled, I'm Sober, But There's Still Hope. <laughs> By now, it's been a bunch of years that you and I have had our run. So seamlessly do we relate, it's though we almost work as one. We moonlight in fine restaurants where we routinely put on airs, uncorking bottles of fine wines that lend cuisine its utmost flair. While diners seek good tasting food beyond caloric human need, yet it is wine that makes the meal surpass our basic urge to feed. So I serve up the escargot, pate, couscous, and sole meunier, but trust our patrons order wine to show good breeding debonair. Decanting aging juice of grapes means more than just increase in sales. It indicates propitious nights replete with clientele upscale. For drinkers are of different stock than folks who merely come to eat and those who like their wine with meals partake of traits of the aesthete. These epicures, when they're not snobs, are more inclined on their soiree to share some facet of their life or to engage in a repartee. And it's this subtle human touch that keeps the job from getting stale, suggests an underlying bond of humankind may yet prevail, we can hope, Ironically, it's you, my friend, who best elicits conversation enlivening a routine night to make it one of celebration. Because when it's time to pour the wine, it's at this moment you arise as you perform your skillful action right before their very eyes. Now, custom says our ritual be allocated proper time, performed to an unwritten script, which I recite then line by line. I offer up the bottle first, as in a sacrificial rite. The patron scans the label to confirm the choice will bring delight. Then with a flourish you emerge, deceptive in your modest size, as blade then opens with a snap. The foil next we circumcise. The knife with gusto then retracts, the corkscrew now will have its turn as auger starts its spiral path of other chores I now can learn. My stoic, stoic gaze surveys the room recording needs from front to back as you recall revolve mechanically while I assess my planned attack. Though my demeanor may be calm, my mind does race with things to do. To first run bread to number 12 or refill drinks on 32, the chef now screams to pick up food. The hostess has an hour wait. No corporate boardroom CEO could hear more ably concentrate. But all the while the guests watch you as you revolve in pirouette, suspended, spinning in the air, an act we trust they won't forget. It's women who admire you most and unabashedly they gaze as smoothly you extract the cork with one quick stroke, you thus amaze. Most men regard you furtively, their stares of envy they disguise as they recall their last melee with bottle less than quart in size. Then once it's pulled, I sniff the cork, ensuring that the wine's not turned and ascertain before I pour if vinegar should thus be spurned. Now, host should know the vintage picked, which is a custom oft confused, for only if the wife wine is corked may then the bottle be refused. Here I resume my frantic chores, but something now is out of place, for as I start to use your neck, your auger snaps off at its base. 
I hold you broken in my hand. I'm frozen in my frenzied flight. With choreography destroyed, I now appraise my anxious plight. My thoughts attempt to form a plan, but brain I find has shorted out. And as it wanders off in space, apocalyptic visions sprout. Had all of life come down to this, I had such promise in my youth. But now it seemed I'd lost my way, reluctant to admit the truth. A waiter asked, are you all right? Because you're looking sort of green. A line cook shouts, come get your food. The chef contributes words obscene. Yet, but for fate, I work elsewhere. All my old jobs are overseas. So glad the global marketplace has helped third world economies. I've tried to find a real job. My resume shows I don't shirk. But in the eyes of HR guys, they think that I'm too old to work. And there's a touch of irony, for I work shifts without a break. The place is often anarchy, and yet the pressure I can take. Damn, there's the kitchen serving up my steaming plates of beef ragu. I got no time to grouse or moan. Make way big trays coming through. Thank you, everybody. We got one more. If the boss, if the boss allows me to have a on that. The Bistro Blues, that's entitled. True story. The poor chef died a few years ago. Just a young guy. Got an infection at work and lasted three days, and that was the end of it. True story. And this